with Inside HPC, and we're here at the NVIDIA booth at SC11. I'm here with Steve Scott. Steve is CTO of the Tesla business unit. Is that the, is that the right title? Did That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Steve, i got to start out with the question everyone wants to know. Why the move from Cray to NVIDIA? Well, fundamentally, it's just because I'm excited about the technology, and I'm, I'm excited about what the company is doing. Uh, at, at Cray, I had a chance to work very, very closely with NVIDIA and Intel and AMD, for that matter, trying to figure out how are we going to solve the the power constrained problems uh, of the next decade and, and move forward. And I became absolutely convinced that heterogeneous computing was the only path forward and, and, and also convinced that NVIDIA was really the only company that had a business model that worked and was really, really serious about doing heterogeneous computing. So I uh, decided to give up a job that I love and come join NVIDIA and it's been a, a great three months so far. Well, terrific. So you kind of bring this legacy because this announcement comes out after that about Titan, which is a Cray system with a lot of GPUs. Why is Titan important for that next 10 years on that road to Exascape? Well, uh, Oak Ridge National Lab is really the world's premier open science computing facility. And at Oak Ridge, working with us at Cray, they went through several generations of CPU-based computers. And when it came time to figure out what was after Jaguar, they uh, came to the conclusion that the only path, that they, the only way they were going to be able to, to get to where they needed to go was to adopt GPU computing. And, and what's so important about this is, in my mind, an, an endorsement of that technology direction. This is a, 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 an organization that has to support hundreds of different users and has to support codes that scale up to the, to the pinnacles of high performance computing. And they decided to go all in. And so I'm really psyched to see all the work that they do uh, on Titan, all the different applications that they that they enable to use CPU computing for and the science that gets done as a result. Well being at uh, SC11 here we're all you know people are talking about exascale uh, 10 to the 18th uh, by 2018 what is Nvidia doing to help us get there? Well there are really two things that we're focusing on first and foremost is performance per watt. We, we are now in an era where we are constrained not by how many transistors we can put on a chip but by the power that we can deliver to that chip. If we ran all the transistors as fast as we could, we would literally burn up the chips. So power efficiency equals performance, and it's going to become more and more so. So GPUs were really designed from the beginning to do throughput workloads with very, very good power efficiency. Um, CPUs are wonderful inventions, but they weren't designed to do that. They were designed to run single threads really fast. So what we're doing is focusing uh, day in, day out with hundreds of engineers on driving down overhead and getting better performance per watt. That's, that's really number one. Um, the second thing we're really focusing on is ease of programming. Uh, we just announced yesterday the OpenACC uh, standard for using directives uh, to get performance on accelerated uh, systems. And, and the wonderful thing about OpenACC is that using directives, what the user then focuses on is exposing parallelism in the code, uh, making the codes inherently better. And what we found that the codes actually run faster once you've done that. They run faster on the CPU systems. Um, and so OpenACC is just one of the things we're doing to try to broaden the scope of, of where GPUs are applicable, make them uh, beneficial across all of the HPC space, and make these things easier to use. So really, it's, it's, it's per, uh, performance per watt and ease of programming. So on that per performance per watt, how does consumer level technology play into this in the future? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because uh, for the first time, the needs of consumer technology, all the way down from a, a cell phone up to a supercomputer, are one and the same, and it's, it's again performance per watt. And so all of our performance now comes from parallelism. Um, and you can build, what you really want to do to get energy efficiency is build a very simple, low overhead processor, processing core that can be replicated everywhere from phones to supercomputers. And so we're able to leverage from a t technological perspective, we're able to leverage the same uh, high efficiency designs from uh, cell phones to tablets to laptops to gaming systems to professional graphics to supercomputers. So there's that kind of tie in that's never existed before. The other, the other thing that's really important though is the business model. 
Uh, the HBC market is wonderful, I love it, but it's too small to support the development of these processors. It takes on the order of a billion dollars uh, to come out with a, with a next generation HBC processor. And if you're just focused on the HBC market, it just doesn't work, even if you get partial government support for it. Uh, so we would not be able to do what we do if it weren't for the very large consumer graphics market that with, with its high volumes uh, enables us to invest uh, and, and build high performance computers out of the same parts. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up because with the economies of scale being the force that's going to bring that cost down, where does the ARM chip come into all this with NVIDIA's plans? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of interest in ARM these days. Uh, I think it's pretty inevitable that ARM is going to be, be making inroads into HPC. And, and once 64-bit ARM comes out in a few years. Uh, I, I think that pace of, of infiltration, if you will, will accelerate. So NVIDIA is designing our own ARM core. Uh, it's going to appear first in our Tegra processors, which are our uh, integrated processors for, for phones and tablets, for the mobile space. Um, it may well at some point appear in our Tesla line, which is our supercomputing uh, parts. Um, and uh, we, we think it's the right uh, instruction set uh, for HPC in the long run uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a cleaner, more modern instruction set, easier to design a, a really good small area, low power, uh, high performance core uh, than you can with the x86 instruction set. And the, the era of x86 binary compatibility um, is, is kind of coming to a close. It's very, very important in some markets. In the HPC space, uh, not so much because we always recompile our code. So binary compatibility doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is, is energy efficiency. And we're also moving to this sort of bimodal world where you've got clients and you've got back rooms, neither of which really care about binary compatibility. Um, so we see a, a pretty interesting future, but it's going to take a few years for ARM to really get here. So one off scripted question I got, are you bullish on, can we get to X's 2018, 10 to the 18 flops? Is, are we going to make that with that 20 megawatt target? That is a tough nut, isn't it? It, it is a very tough nut to crack. Um, I, I am bullish that we will get there or get close. Um, I was going to say die trying, but but uh, I, I, I actually am optimistic that we'll be able to get there. We've looked at where we are today and extrapolating forward with no external funding, no DOE Exascale program. We're predicting uh, a 20 megawatt exaflop in around the 2022-ish time frame. Uh, we've also looked, we've spent quite a bit of time looking at the exascale challenge um, and scoped out the work that we could do with uh, DOE funding and we think we can pull that in a few years. We've got, we've got some good ideas, both architectural and, and circuits, uh, for doing that. Uh, whether it'll be exactly 20 megawatts, maybe a few higher, we'll have to see. But I think it's within, uh, within sight.